be condemned? No, there will not be any condemnation. Because Jesus Christ himself took upon him the condemnation, so there is no condemnation or uh, judgment for condemnation. The believers will never face judgment for condemnation since Christ has took upon himself the punishment for their sins. Not some of their sins, but all of their sins. It's very important for us to know. If Christ has pay, you know, taken our condemnation, he did for a reason that the, we do not have to go through the condemnation. So many times when we hear the preaching, they use the word we, thinking that that includes all believers. We have to clearly understand that Acts chapter 17, verse 30 and 31. Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. This is the word. Okay? And 31st verse says, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained, he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. So, Apostle Paul here is speaking to the unbelievers that Christ will judge the world in righteousness. Okay? The, and we have to, whenever we read that, we have to really pay close attention. Not, it's not talking about the believers. Now, the next part is, will the born-again believers ever be judged? That's a different question. Judged, there's a judgment for condemnation, and there's a judgment for rewarding. Okay? And the believers will not be condemned for, uh, will not be judged for condemnation, but they will be judged. Then it says, for we must all, who is the we, is identifying with the believers in the Corinthian church. And he used that imperative, must. Okay? We must all appear before the judgment seat. The Greek word is bema. Just for reference, just keep in mind that that word judgment is not Judgment for condemnation versus judgment for a rewarding system. I will tell you what that means. Judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Now the question we need to ask ourselves, as believers, how about the sins that we confessed? There are lots, I have heard people preaching that after believers, after becoming believers, if you did something bad or sinful, it all will be brought over there. If that were true, I cannot trust any of God's word. If you confess your sins, he is just and faithful to forgive us from some of, the right, some of our sins. No, all unrighteousness and the cleanses by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You know, it's, it is preached in a way that you have an easy time when you're a sinner, but when you, have, when you become a Christian, when you become a born-again believer as a child of God, God will have a much tougher standard. Gosh, I don't even know how they uh, formulate their way of thinking. We are recipients of God's mercy. If God can judge the world for condemnation, he's merciful to them. How much more will he also? That's what he says. If he can give his only begotten son, how much more will he also give us all things? So the, when we ask God 
for forgiveness, God will forgive and he will forget. It's not in our record. But what is he in the 10th verse? We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Now, there are people who think that they are doing lots of things for the Lord. Okay? There are ministers who do the work of the Lord, thinking that they are doing lots of things. But in fact, they are not doing work of the Lord it, they may be doing the work of the church or they may be doing their own personal thing. In the premise of working for the Lord. And there are lots of hidden agendas behind it. There are lots of this in American churches, English churches, Malayali All these are going on throughout the world. That is what he is talking about here. And that's what it, when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ for rewarding, there are things that are done for the Lord that will receive proper rewarding. And the other will be tested. And if it is for your own self gain and for your own personal glory and everything, it will be completely disappearing. And you will stand. You feel like you have accomplished lots of things. Lots of things. Hidden motive may be financial gain. And that is not for the work of the Lord. Work of the Lord should be done in God's way, according to God's principle. Let me say that again. God's work should be done in God's way. Finance is not a problem for God. We can create the entire world with one word. Finance will be nothing for him. Lots of people say, well, pastor, we have lots of money, then we can do lots of work. I tell them, if you do lots of work, the finance will come afterwards. If you have finances and if you do lots of work, that is not the Lord's work. You're doing it your own way. Don't put God in collateral and raise funds. There's nothing wrong with raising funds as long as it is used for the Lord's work. But lots of people use, raise Lord, you know, funds and everything. They use some of it for the Lord's work and the, most of it will be used for their own personal gains. And that is stealing from the Lord. I'm telling you with utmost conviction according to the word of God. And this will be just. And many of those people, many of us, everyone will stand. There's no exception. When we stand before God, there'll be time of shame. Why is the shame? Because at that time, you know, we think, we means every one of us, who think that we did accomplish lots of things for the Lord, and the Lord will test us. It says through fire. Under that time, there will be only a few things that are left over. And others will understand that, you know, didn't that pastor come over to our church and raise funds? And didn't we give so much money to him or to her or to that project or this project? <laughs> How come there's only small little things that left over? We'll talk. There's, there's lots of things mentioned over here. Those are the things talking about. It's not the sins. It's not the sin that we are talking about here. The sin is already done away with by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He's not holding, you know, if that sins are accounted, not a single person, a single one of us can stand in the presence of God. Okay? So it's the Bema or judgment seat of Christ over here for the believers is for the work that we have done, whether good or bad. If it is not for the glory of God, it will be bad. If it is for the glory of God, it will be good. Acts 12.21. Um. So Herod, 
arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his bema, and he spoke. I just want to mention a con different two, three contexts of what bema stands for, Acts 12, 21. Okay? It can be a platform in Greek towns where rulers made decisions and then handed down to subordinates, means people underneath. It is also a place where awards were given in the Olympic Games. The winners of the Olympic Games, not everybody who watched the, the Olympic Games. The winners. How is the winners selected in Olympic Games? It's not just a competition, that's part of it. You have to play according to the rules. God has rules. And you follow the rule. And you, if you don't follow the rule, you may have run all the way. You know, especially when you watch football game, looks like they threw the ball and they caught it. And the, jet, you know, the referee will come and say, bring the ball over here. You know, there's a foul flag thrown and they will bring the ball all the way over here. What's wrong with that guy who ran all the way over there? In the team, this is a team play. One of the team members have done a foul, and they're going to do that. And though, so the, the rule is not followed, the ball is brought all the way back over here. It's the same way. God's ministry is done in God's way according to God's rules. I wish the churches today and the pastors today and the believers today understand that. The Lord's ministry is not doing things your own way. That's why it is called the Lord's church. And that's why it's called the Lord's ministry. And God is very serious about it. Um, regulations. What is behind... I don't know what is written over there. Okay, what is Bema of Christ? That's what it means. What is Bema of Christ? The judgment seat must not be confused with the great white throne judgment seat from which Christ will judge the wicked. That's wicked means the world. You had to be really wicked to be judged. No. Okay? If you are not considered with the believers, you are with the world. If you are not considered with the believers, you are considered with the wicked. Okay? So, whenever we talk about the judgment, we have to understand, clearly make the distinction between the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment. Okay? This is Revelation 20. We will re read that passage a little bit later on. So, <clears throat> we will read it differently. Okay? Because of the great work of Christ on the cross, believers will not face their sins. So if anyone thinks that if you have become genuinely born again believers and all your sins will be exposed over there, that is absolutely wrong. Because Christ has fully, absolutely fully paid off, paid for all your sins. And have declared you as righteous. And there is no more sins left over. The church and some people, some pastors might think, well, you're, you are not, you know, I'm not talking about the behavior modification. I'm talking about the sins that God has forgiven. If he has forgiven, he has forgiven completely, absolutely, positively. That's the way God deals with it. Otherwise, tell me, tell you, there's no a single person, no believers, no unbelievers, no one can stand in the presence of God as righteous. We have to give account of our works and service for the Lord. That's what we are talking about, the Bema. John 5, 24 says, Most assuredly, absolutely, positively, I say to you, he who hears my word. See, we are on the subject of the effect of God's word and how God's word will judge. And I will tell you with the whole class, I will share with you how the word has a role in judging. 
hears my word and believes in him who sent me has now has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment for condemnation. So I just add that footnote, you know, my personal footnote as judgment for condemnation, but has passed from death. That's a punishment. And he's passed from death to everlasting life. All of us, I believe that all of us who are born again believers has at one time passed from death and now we are, we have life and we are in life. We have passed from darkness and we are light, we are in light also. Romans 8.1, there is there to those who are in Christ Jesus. I know, in my life, that's the end of it. And lots of people like King James Version. So do I. But I don't like the translation of this script, particular scripture verse. Neither in King James or New King James. Because I know that I have a previous class before. And it has an addition. That's why I put it in, it's in Roman times, times uh, Roman. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. That is not part of that scripture verse. How do you know, Pastor? I'll tell you why. Okay? The fourth verse, fast forwarding to 8.4, that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us. Call as scribal error. They took part of the fourth verse and put it over there on the first verse. And that is not part of that scripture verse. In Malayalam Bible, they were using a different manuscript. That's why it says, That's the end of period. That's the outside of Now, the, the question is that I have is suppose. That, part, that scripture verse is part of that verse. If you are walking according to the spirit, not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit, then why should there be a repetition saying that there is no condemnation? Does it make sense? Let me repeat it again. Somehow you didn't understand the question. If you are walking who, if you do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit, why should, what is the relevancy of this first part? There's no condemnation. Okay? If you attend to the class and God high grade, you will not fail. If I say that, what, do you, what, what would you say? Is that, is that true? If you attended all classes and you took the test and got highest grade, then it's, it's all, I don't have to tell you that you will not fail. So this statement should, this first word should end up to here, okay? This is the part. The fourth word, yes, that is correct. The first word should have the, this, therefore now no condemnation. So since we are believers, we are in Christ Jesus, we have no condemnation. Hallelujah. And we can say it boldly. Judgment seat of Christ will be a place of revelation. Means unveiling. That is, this is where it says that when we stand before him, we will not be ashamed. Because, believe me, this is where all the ministers, all the believers. We can say lots of things before the pastor and we can say lots of things before the people. At that time, everything that we have done and we have, we have we said we have done will be brought to light. Unveiling is removing the curtain and reveal everything that is behind. That's exactly what that word means. We can go through <laughs> things and you know hide lot of things under the praise of the Lord hallelujah and everything and at that time all those 
things that seem spiritual? Believe me. That's why I say when you shake hand with your brother, wait, you know, don't let it be from the depth of your heart. When you say praise the Lord, you know, don't look at hey, him, hey, praise the Lord. You know, you're doing something just for the sake of ritual. Don't go through this, is not a game. This is a life. Christian life is not a game to play. This is not an act. You don't act like a Christian. You be a Christian. You can act in Hollywood or Bollywood. In Christianity, you be one. That's what God is expecting from us. Hallelujah. Is for the word appear means to be revealed. As we live and work here on earth, it is relatively easy for us to hide things and pretend. And believe me, in the, even in, not even in Pentecostal churches, even, you know, we are Pentecostal people and so am I. Pentecostal churches, there are lots of things that are pretentious, pretending. And there's no room for pretension. But the true character of believers works will be exposed before the searching eyes of the Savior. In Romans 14, 10 also, again, he will reveal whether our works have been good or bad. Bad will be somewhat good, you know. You know, I know that back home we have coconut. You know, when they cut the coconut and the merchant will come and buy the coconuts and they will shake it, you know, outwardly look Real good. It looks like a real coconut. You know, I'm talking about the unhulled, you know, the coconut. Still has the outward shell. It looks like a real coconut. And the guy who shakes it, I don't know how in the world, he, you know, he can shake it by, he seems like he has a, some kind of sonar thing in his ear. And he can shake it. And he remove it over here and throw it over there. And when he leaves... For curiosity, when, you know, when, when we were ch children, I opened it up. You know, <laughs> that is when I find out that that tree is not real coconut. It's inside has not done the job. If that man, merchant can do that with a coconut, how infinitely more possible is for the Lord who sees everything and who searched the motive of our heart be able to find whether our action be good or worthless. That's what I, the word bad means, worthless. The character of our service will be revealed, as well as the motives that impels us. I wish believers and pastors understand this. Our motive is of utmost importance. God is searching for our motive. Okay? 1 Corinthians 3.11 For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, all these seems to be good. All these seem to be good. Each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because... It will be revealed, it will be exposed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Doesn't mean that there will be a big fire over there. No, God will look through his eyes. Jesus Christ will look through the eyes. And that fire is able to test Oh, that when we understand that, we will be much more respectful when we do the work of the Lord. Everything will be revealed. Everything will be exposed at that time. 14th verse. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. See, the earlier we have mentioned that about the things made with the foundations made with the gold, 
silver, and precious stones. Will they endure? Yes. How about the wood, hay, and straw? There are three good things, and there are three enduring things, and three temporal things. And if our, our work can either be silver, gold, silver, or precious stones, or our works for the Lord will be wood, hay, or straw. Anything that we do for the glory of God will endure forever. And that is, I'll be considered as silver, precious stones. As I mentioned earlier, when we say God, glory of God, I did all those for, for the glory of God. When you do things your own way, according to your own rules and regulations, it's not for the glory of God. That's for your own glory. Whether my name will be exposed, I get recognition, all those things are for your own personal things, gains. When I think about his glory, his way, according to his rules, that is, will, that, those are the things that will last. That's what Apostle Paul is talking about in 1 Corinthians 3, 12. Okay? We read this part, 15, the verse, if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. Lots of people, I have heard even people preach, at that time, there's something found in you. He will send you to eternal hell. That's a lie. According to Apostle Paul has clearly said that. It's not about the testing of your salvation. It's the testing of your work. After you become a Christian. Your salvation is purchased by the precious blood of Jesus Christ and that's not affected. You know, <laughs> I remember um, raising our children. I, I'm not going to mention who. We have a, like a board um, for the good behavior, we put a happy face, and the bad behavior, there'll be a sad face. You know, so for being prompt, we put a happy face. Don't do the homework, there'll be sad face. And one of our daughters will get very upset about the sad face that, you know, she would rather get some spank and get away with it rather than seeing this board over there with all the sad face over there. Daddy, I don't like that. I said, I don't like either. This is the way it has been. That's the reality. And the next week, we start with a brand new. Everything is happy face. And I come in, you know, you did a great job. I'm so proud of you. Okay? Because in the presence of all the people of God, the commendation that we receive will be shameful if we have not attained anything for the glory of God. You know, what have you done with the money? How much of it has been invested for the glory of God, for winning souls? How much of our time has been invested for the glory of God? I'm, believe me, all these things, our life completely belongs to the Lord. We have been purchased with the precious blood. Everything that we have is of the Lord, and he is going to give account. He, he is going to ask us, and we have to give account. Everything that we have done behind the scene in hiding will be exposed, revealed. I did not say that. Apostle Paul has done clearly. 1 Corinthians 4, 5. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. He will both bring to light, say again, the hidden things, darkness, and reveal the counsels of the, of the heart. Then each one's praise will come from God. This is bad. When you talk about being fearful, if, you, if believers do not worry about something, believe me, start worrying about this part. 
Lots of people say, all I want to do is go to heaven, you know. As long as I can all can sit in the back shed over there in heaven, that's all I need. Those things are, they're dreaming. They're making up their own heaven. Heaven is glorious for the presence of God himself. You cannot hide any place. There's no shed over there. Let us evaluate our life very carefully, day by day. And 1 Corinthians 4, 5 is very vivid and clear that we will have to stand before the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ, even though it is about the reward. You know, let us clean our entire life together for the glory of God. Hallelujah. 1 John 2, 28. And now, little children, abide in him that when he appears is about the coming on the Lord. We may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Wow. After becoming believers, do we be, will we be ashamed? I did not say that. Apostle Paul said, and Apostle John said, we'll be ashamed if we do things for our own gain, for our own glory, our own recognition. And if we do it for the glory of God, means do things for the glory of God according to God's holy standard. And that is when we will be recognized and we will not be ashamed at that time. It's a very serious matter. I'll read a couple of more scripture verses and then close. Romans 14, 10. But when you judge your... But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? Or we shall... We shall... Again, that we read that we must all... Over here is another imperative. Shall all stand before the Bema of Christ. Okay? In the King James Version, New King James Version, and the YLT is Young's literal translation. It's a Christ and in God. It doesn't matter if it is Christ or God. Both are same. Jesus Christ is God, and, you know, so I'm not going to pick about which translation is correct. Here, again, the word is Bema. Okay, we will start from here next week. So, in the Old Testament, Jehovah is written as a judge. Okay? And in the New Testament, when it comes, the Father has given all the judging to the Son. Then it says, He will not judge anyone. The word that I speak that will judge you, judge you in the last day. You may ask, how come, you, how come God cannot sell all these things at one time? Because if he reveals everything at one time, he will not understand. That's why he is slowly teaching us. That's why in the, you know, um, that's why we have Sesame Street. You know, at that level, that's all you can understand. You know, then grow. when you go to second or third level, there'll be another level of teaching. So God is teaching people in the Old Testament, and this is the way it is. And after that, in the, when the proper time came, Christ is the judge. And then when Christ came, he said, my word. The word is inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. So the word is actually Holy Spirit behind the scene, all three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all of them are involved in judging part. And that is serious business. And I will tell you exactly, this is mainly about the judgment of the world or the wicked or the sinners. And I will we'll be looking at the scriptures, scriptures passages from Book of Revelation, chapter 19, 
and 20. I will not deal with 21. I will not go into detail, but this is for us to clear, clear understand what that means. Let's pray. Pastor Jeffrey, would you please pray? Hallelujah. Let us prepare our hearts and minds together as we heard from the word of God. Every word that the Holy Spirit has spoken to us is inspired from our daily life. Father Lord, we commit everything into your presence in this beautiful morning. We ask, Father Lord, for your true inspiration, Father Lord, to the word that you have spoken to us. And we thank you, Lord, for enabling and empowering Pastor George Verghese, Father Lord, to teach us, Father Lord, from your word. Let it be inspired and also, Father Lord, in our daily life, be a challenge to us, Father Lord. We pray, Father Lord, for our worship that is going to start now, the next few minutes. We pray for our entire worship team. We pray, Father Lord, they be anointed and, Father Lord, empowered and the presence of God be felt, Father Lord, experienced in the midst of us. We pray for the rest of the service and for the remainder of the service, Father Lord. Bring your people so that we may enjoy your presence. You take all the glory, honor, and praise. And together all the saints of God say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. 